the last video we took a look at probability trees and how we can use those to determine the likelihood of an event occurring, the probability of something happening. Uh, we're going to look at a different way to do that, and uh, this method is called a probability table. To start off with probability tables, we're going to start by making an example one. Um, and we're going to look at what would happen if we flip two separate coins. To do this with a probability tree, we would have went something like this. We would have went heads and tails, and then we would have known the second one. We could have had a heads or a tails, and then a heads or a tails. And then we would have got a heads, heads, a heads, tails, a tails, heads, and a tail, tail. In a probability table, instead, we're going to be getting the same results here. Um, but we're going to be showing it in a slightly different way. So in a table, it's going to be a little more organized, maybe a little bit easier to represent uh, what we're looking at. Um, with the probability table, we can look at this right here. So we have a heads. Let's say we get a heads and then a heads. We know our results would be a HH. If we had a head and then a, so we had heads, heads here. And then if we went with heads and tails, we would get a heads, tails in this one. Here we would get a tails, heads, and then a tails, tails. So if you notice from our previous example where I showed you the probability tree of this, we get the exact same outcomes, a heads, heads, a heads, tails, a tails, heads, and a tails, tails. And we can see that our sample space contains these four different possible outcomes. Okay, now we're going to make a probability table, um, and we're going to look at the situation where we'd be rolling two different dice and, and getting some sort of a result. So to set this up, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my sides here. So I'm going to say my first dice, uh, my first die, I guess, over here, and my second die up here. Um, and I know that when I roll a die, I can get six different results. I can get a one, I can get a two, I can get a three, I can get a four, I can get a five, or I can get a six. And it turns out that is no different when we roll the second die, as you know. All the typical die that we use mostly in board games or day-to-day -day, uh, would be six-sided. So I'm just going to label those as one, two, three, four, five, and six again. Um, I'm going to organize this into a table, so I'm going to make um, a bunch of columns, and hopefully you can maybe you can use a ruler or a lined sheet to make yours look a little nicer than this, but um, here we go. So now I'm going to look at this. If I had rolled a 1 on my first die and a 1 on my second die, I could put a 1-1 one, one here. And then I can start to go through the entire process of filling out this whole table. I know I can get a 1-2 here, a 1-3. 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. I'm just going to change colors for the next line. Uh, a 2-1, a 2-2, two, two, a 2-3, two, 2-4, two, 2-5, two, 2-6. Two, and you kind of get the idea of where we're going with this. Um, eventually, we're going to have this whole table filled out um, with all the possible outcomes, our sample space for this um, particular probability experiment. Two, four, three, four, 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 five, four, six. Sorry, that should be a five, a five, one, a five, two, a five, three. Feel free to fast forward through this if you want to get through this a little bit quicker. Five, 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 six. And then at the bottom, we've got six, one, six, two, six, three, six, four. 6, 5, and 6, 6. So right here, what I've done is I've made my probability table for um, making a experiment that involves rolling two die, um, two dice, and getting all our possible outcomes. And what all this is basically saying is that these are the 36 possible outcomes you can get when you roll two dice together. You could get a 1 and a 1. You could get a 3 and a 6. You could get a 5 and a 2. All of these are the possible outcomes. There's no other ones. These are the only ones that are possible. Okay, so we know how to make a probability table. Now we need to look at how we can actually use it to find the probability or the likelihood of a certain event. So what I did here is I went ahead and I cleaned up um, the table of val or the probability table um, from the one I made before. So hopefully we can read it a little bit better. What we're going to look at here is um, using two dice, which we've set up the table to show um, what's the probability, the likelihood of rolling a nine or higher. So the nine or higher would be our favorable outcome. 
Um, this is the one that we care about. This is the one that we're going to look for and figure out the probability of. And if you remember, our equation to find probability is our probability is equal to our favorable outcomes divided by our total outcomes. Um, so we need to figure out which outcomes actually have a 9 or a higher. And I can go through this one by one, um, but I'm going to start in the bottom right here because I know that a 6 and a 6 is a 12, so that's going to be bigger than a 9. Um, and then I can continue to circle all the ones that do give me a result of 9 or higher. Um, so it could include a 9 also. That's why I included 6 and 3, 5 and 4, 4 and 5, and 3 and 6. I count these up. I know I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 possible favorable outcomes. And if I count up all the total possible outcomes, the sample space for this particular uh, probability experiment, I will get 36. Okay, so 10 out of 36, that is my probability. And I know I can put that into uh, lowest terms, um, or I can turn it into a decimal, or I can turn it into a percentage. So if I'm going to turn this into lowest terms, I can put this into a, I know a 5 goes into both the top and the bottom. And I can go 5 over 18. That would be in lowest terms as far as fractions go. Um, but I know I can go 5 divided by 18, and I will get it as a decimal, which would be 0 0.27 repeating. Or I can get 27.7 repeating percent. So that's actually an uh, interesting thing to know if you're ever playing a game where you need to um, roll a 9 or higher, or a specific number. Uh, you can figure out the exact probability of how likely that's going to happen. Um, so I know what this is telling me is that if I'm going to be rolling two dice, I have a 27.7% chance of getting a 9 or a higher. Let's take a look at uh, this specific example here. Exact same idea, except we're going to look at the probability of rolling exactly a 7. Okay, so 7, rolling a 7 would be my favorable outcome. Now, which, which outcomes give me a 7? I know a 6 and a 1 gives me a 7, a 5 and a 2, a 4 and a 3, a 3 and a 4, a 2 and a 5, and a 1 and a 6 give me a exact 7. So my favorable outcome is 7, so I'm going to write out my probability is equal to my favorable outcome, which is 7, and from the earlier, we know all the possible outcomes, the, the sample space for rolling two dice contains 36 possible outcomes, and I can turn this into a fraction in lower terms, I can turn this into a decimal, and I can turn this into a percent. Now, 7 over 36, that's already in most terms, so we can leave that as it is. Um, if I take this 7 divided by 36 into my calculator, I will find that it is 0 0.194 four repeating um, and we know that that's just the same as 19.4 percent so it turns out if you just want to get exactly a seven you have a 19.4 percent chance of getting that with rolling two dice